Moon and Taurus trine all of the Capricorn energy. King Kunks the Sun and oppose Mars. The Moon is in Taurus and it's going to continue to tra transit throughout Taurus today. And it was it slipped into Taurus uh, early yesterday. And of course, the Moon likes to be in Taurus. The Moon is exalted here. Why? Because you know we feel emotionally stable when things are comfortable. And when things are stable, because Taurus is considered to be the most stable of the signs. So when we are, when we find ourselves in situations that are stable, we actually tend to feel more comfortable and we're able to actually feel through things more clearly. Interesting enough with it being a fixed earth sign. But what's going on with this one? Well, we have some interesting aspects. Of course, we have the square to Mars, oh, not square to Mars, excuse me, the opposition to Mars in Scorpio. Who's going to win this battle? The moon, which is exalted in Taurus, or Mars, which actually likes to be in Scorpio, a traditional ruler of Scorpio? There's definitely some interesting communication with these energies, because anytime that you bring the moon and the Mars into an aspect, you definitely are making a concoction for explosion, explosive reactions. But seeing as these signs, these planets like to be in these energies, and the moon already is in a sign where it feels the most comfortable outside of Cancer, of course, there is this sort of energy. I'm sorry that it's going like in and out. I don't know why the light's doing that, but it's okay. You're going to get this sort of energy where we're going to be looking at our true value system as it relates to our inspirations and our motivations with Mars and Scorpio. And how we can actually take this sort of opposition where, you know, with the thing about Scorpio is that while Scorpio definitely likes to do things for themselves, they very much, so, very much so do things for the collective. And Mars and Scorpio is really about this deeper ambition that we have and how we can actually, you know, see the depth in that and bring out this deeper sense of intuition. Mars and Scorpio is very much so the um, sort of, it takes that sort of internal energy of Scorpio anyways and externalizes it. So now what we're going to be seeing is that a lot of these deeper passions and wants and desires that we have are going to kind of come to the forefront. The moon is going to be pulling on these energies and it's going to make them a lot more apparent. Especially considering the fact that the moon is already going into its full moon's phase. So it's already pulling on these waters. So if you feel yourself with these deeper intensities starting to rise and bubble up to the surface, don't be surprised because that's exactly what this trend is, is doing. So there's certain actions that you've been wanting to may needing to take as it relates to your true value system. And you're really going to be pondering and questioning whether or not you should really be doing these things. What's going to help you, of course, is the moon trying to all this Capricorn energy. The moon trying to the Capricorn energy, it's trying over to Jupiter, it's trining over to Venus, Saturn, and Pluto. In fact, at the time of me making this, it is trining over to Venus. Venus, which of course would much rather be in Taurus as opposed to Capricorn. But this is about taking that sort of comfortability that we have with the moon in Taurus and asking ourselves, you know, what am I willing to do? What am I willing to sacrifice to create a better now for myself, which will in turn create a better future? We got to remember, Venus definitely is the planet of beauty and pro projects. But with it being a Capricorn, it is very much so determined to bring this inner beauty out and kind of put it out into the world. And what you're going to see with this energy as it makes its trine over to Saturn as well and Pluto, there are certain decisions that we're going to be making with this moon in Taurus leading up into this full moon in Gemini of what is it that truly matters to us? And are we willing to put in the work to bring that to fruition? To bring that to fruition. We have to remember Venus naturally rules Libra, and Libra is the beginning of fall, which is the harvest time, which is fruition. All of those seeds that we planted before Libra season, they come up during Libra season. All of those fruits, all of those seeds, they come up and then we harvest. So with Venus and Capricorn and the moon and Taurus making this trying to all of this energy and the south node, mind you, we have to remind ourselves, 
what truly matters to us and what are we willing to put in the work to manifest and bring about something greater for ourselves and ultimately for the collective because venus is definitely still concerned about people it's definitely still concerned about creating that harmony and that balance but this is only going to come at this moment when we truly acknowledge what we truly value and we actually put in the work and the effort to make these things actualize. The moon is also going to be king kunxing over to the sun. The sun, which is in Sagittarius right now, and the king kunx is what I call the awkward stare from across the room, right? It's the awkward stare from across the room. Think of it like when you're in class and you see people passing notes to each other. And then you're kind of looking at them like, oh, I wonder what they're talking about. This is having to deal with our belief structure. And right now, what can happen is that if we outsource these beliefs and these ideologies, you should actually check out my daily pool on my Instagram because this really goes in line with it. All of the cards that I drew were pretty much these aspects that we're experiencing today. It's actually kind of crazy. But it's talking about what happens if we adopt someone else's philosophy of life? Does it actually mesh with our value system and how we truly feel about things and what truly is going to give us that stability, what's truly going to give us that level of comfort? This is also, of course, about going outside our comfort zone. We have to be honest with ourselves about our own beliefs and see, have we been living within this world of comfort, but has it been keeping us small? Has it been keeping us small? The fact of the matter is, is that Jupiter wants to blow you up. Jupiter wants to blow you up. It wants you to be big. It wants you to experience. It wants you to have that fortune. It wants you to have that success. But it's not going to come unless you put in the work and the effort. So this is a moment where we really do have to believe in ourselves, And we really do have to acknowledge that, you know, not all philosophies are going to work for us. We can integrate little bits and pieces and stuff like that, of course, but this is about what is truly right for you. What is truly right for you. Like I said, we're moving into this full moon in Gemini. That's gonna be a powerful one. And not only that, it's gonna be the last full moon that we get before the major eclipses in Capricorn and in Cancer. So we gotta prepare for this. The next time that the moon comes in Gemini, it will be right before the full moon lunar eclipse. Powerful stuff. Are you guys ready for this change? Are you guys ready? Because 2019, it's coming to an end. Moving into this 2020 portal and things are about to get very, very feisty and very, very interesting and intense. And we just got to see what's going to happen. All right. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. The moon in Taurus trining the Capricorn energy, opposing Mars and King Kunxing the sun. Hope that you guys gained some information and knowledge and some nuggets of gold out of this. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe on my YouTube channel, and I will see you all on the next video.